All right, it's time for yet another Lamar Aismo video. Um, we're going to talk about, because this is such a good read, Gideon Spies. And the funny part is this, whoever this uh, Gordon Thomas uh, individual is, he's a fanboy of uh, not only Israel, but pretty much everything they do from the IDF. Uh, very, he writes this in a very uh, pro-Israel tone, and um, you know it's it's a bit it's, it's funny reading stuff like that. You know, people cheering on uh, a power that actually, uh, in, in my humble opinion, if they were to be less hostile and uh, less you know, uh, less of uh, saboteurs uh, towards their neighbors, they get a lot along a lot better. And they would, um, you know, probably prosper, but because uh, because uh, apparently, and I know some people say, well, that's not true because the uh, Arab, the neighboring countries, don't like them. Another could be further from the truth because as we speak, um, according to Jason Unruh, who uh, another channel that um, I feel needs to be checked out. Uh, I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff, but uh, a lot of stuff I will. I say about half the time, uh, you know, on certain issues. Uh, another good channel to check out. But according to him, uh, Netanyahu actually says that uh, they want to send the IDF, the the um, Orwellian uh, labeled uh, Israeli Defense Force. It should be the Israeli Offensive Force. They want to send them to Yemen uh, to help Saudi Arabia because, as we mentioned, Lawrence Arabia is what we affectionately call Saudi Arabia. Is a very incompetent country. Uh, their soldiers are um, uh, uh, pathetic and uh, lackluster at best. They, uh, <laughs> which is why they had to hire mercenaries. There are videotapes of Sudanese soldiers actually talking about killing uh, the Houthis and eating them raw. So these are the sort of unsavory uh, individuals they had to hire to fight on their behalf. And uh, also they've hired Colombian mercenaries. You know, uh, right wing. Uh, you know, man, women, and child murdering uh, right-wing mercenaries from uh, Colombia. They've also uh, enlisted their support. So you can see Saudi Arabia attracts the uh, finest uh, people in the world in order to help them in an offensive war to install a dictator in a neighboring country that the local population want nothing to do with. Except for the, the people of uh, southern Yemen, uh, south Yemen, which as if anyone familiar with my channel you would know that um, I advocate Yemen being split into uh, at the very least two two countries again because the north obviously doesn't want to be ruled from the uh, neighboring countries but the south looks like they have no problem with being uh, ruled by the United Arab Emirates and um, you know we'll have to keep an eye on that but so you, there you go. You have Netanyahu offering support to the Al Saud crime family, who just finished. By the way, this is the same uh, Al Saud crime family of Lawrence Arabia that just bombed a uh, school bus and killed 50 children. You know, great humanitarians, great people overall. <laughs> you know, you you know, you, you, it's no wonder they're allies of um, uh, our military industrial complex. They don't mind uh, murdering children, but. Well, yeah, let's get back to the uh, main topic at hand in this particular video, this book, Gideon Spies. There's just more, there's always something, uh, that, you know, worth sharing in this book. And let's see if I, um, but, but the basics of it is that, um, the Israelis were so thorough in having spies in neighboring countries. They actually had, uh, a katza. And I may have misspoken in prior videos, uh, prior 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 videos, uh, that um, the Katzas are actually uh, officers of the Mossad. They had a Katza at every important uh, Egyptian military base. This is before the 1967 war, and uh, especially the air bases. And they knew the. Um, uh, actually, let me read it. In the run up to the Six Day War in 1967, there was either a Mossad Katza or an informer inside every Egyptian air base and military headquarters. You know, and, and I said this before, and then another thing that, um, that I neglected to share in the prior video is that um, the United States put a satellite over um, Yasser Arafat's uh, compound to eavesdrop on what was going on in there. 
And I mean, who would have knew as early as the 90s, a satellite could actually go overhead and get the telecommunications going in and out of the place. Fascinating stuff. But um, the Israeli actually said, what day was that? Because the, um, I forget which agency here in the United States uh, they were uh, conversing with. But the Mossad agent actually told the uh, U.S. agent that, um, what day was that? And he pulled out the same transcript of the same conversation without the technology. How was he able to do that? He actually said on the ground intelligence is better. So apparently the uh, they had um, Yasser Arafat, uh, some, some close confidant uh, uh, actually spying on him. So w which is true, which is why you'll see YouTubers like Brendan O'Connell. All he wants to talk about is the Tau Piat program and the oh Israel's taking over high tech. They're taking over high tech. That's, in, that's important. But when you control the banks of the world or most of them, uh, and then as you, if you were to buy this book and read it, you'll see they can sabotage people's central banks. That's the uh, current page that I'm on said that's, that's the sort of activity that they were uh, ready to, that they can do. They could do it in Iran, especially in and Turkey for that matter. Um, and this is as early as the late 90s, early 2000s. They were talking about having um, mechanisms to sabotage people's banking and their uh, radio and television broadcasts. So when you can do that and when you have the most powerful countries in the world, and that's countries, plural, when you have the most powerful countries by the balls, like when you control their government, to hell with um, being able to eavesdrop on uh, telecommunication because you can have all the intelligence you want. If you're weak and, you know, you can't, you still can't do anything with it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's sad, but that's the case for a lot of college grads. Uh, uh, including myself, you can have uh, the all the intelligence you want, but um, you know, money and power goes goes a lot uh, longer way because, and that should be obvious to anyone from from the likes of people like uh, George W. Bush, who, um, and 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 everyone's favorite um, savior, Donald J. Trump. You don't have to be the brightest person, uh, but if you have the money and the connections, you can have uh, the best life possible and and more power. Uh, you know, so that, that whole, uh, and, and again, it is important because if you were to watch a uh, vice news actually here on YouTube, vice news has a documentary on how, uh, they, they, they show you an, an Israeli, uh, cybersecurity agent hacking into a car and rolling the windows up and down. Yeah. Yeah. When you can do that, it's very important, especially as cars become more automated, they'll be able to kill people that they don't like, uh, you know, seamlessly by getting them in the auto accidents. But, um, I digress. Um, let's get into some of these quotes that I wanted to share, but, you know, so top yard is important, but it's not the end all be all that Brendan O'Connell wants it to be. Uh, and again, I think that guy is, uh, he's a little stark raving mad, just like Chris Dorsey. And uh, anyone who doesn't uh, totally toe his line is, uh, you know, he, he has a lot of disparaging things to say about them when uh, that shouldn't be the case because all of us who do tell the truth here on YouTube, we can all make, di it's better that we do make different contributions and talk about different things uh, because otherwise, you know, it's it doesn't really help when everyone's talking about the same, as long as you're talking about something relevant. If you're out here talking about aliens and uh, like Kev Baker and, uh, the black-eyed children and all this nonsense and this dribble uh, that's not helpful or um in the case of david ike uh, reptilians i mean even though despite that david ike does do a lot of good work and puts out a lot of good information and i think he's a good guy overall uh, uh from just from the uh his presentations here on youtube i'm not saying he's a bad guy but this whole uh, shape-shifting uh, reptilians thing isn't helpful and neither is um, intergalactic or um, or um, as in the case of Alex Jones, these transdimensional demons. No, it's, 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 it's regular people. Yes, they're whacked out and evil. They're in, involved in these occult uh, religious organizations or um, occult fraternities or just mainstream religions, but they're whacked out on them. That's who we're dealing with. We're not dealing with um, uh, aliens, but... Again, I keep digressing. Let's get into this. Uh, okay, uh, this goes into cybersecurity, so this kind of uh, goes into a little 
uh, and this is in the 90s, uh, as early as the 90s, the Israelis said they wanted to switch gears towards uh, more cyber espionage. But here we go. Masada created a large number of its own websites on which they posted carefully constructed disinformation in all the languages of the Middle East. In the context of, the, oh, excuse me, in the context of this was uh, the Arabs. They said the the jihadist groups started using the internet to recruit and to uh, gain popular support. So they would make uh, dummy sites in order to uh, disinform uh, people. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty sure they expanded that into the alternative media. You know. Because there are a lot of people that, that uh, keep you away from the target. SGT Report is another good one who will occasionally drop a jewel here and there. But for the most part he's uh, disinfo. He's in love with this QAnon uh, hoax. But um. Okay, let's continue. In the aftermath of, of Arafat's death, stories began to appear on the sites claiming that Arafat had betrayed his own people for his own aggrandizement and nothing, um, and excuse me, and noting his lack of moral probity. The sites claimed that vast sums of money intended to improve the lives of poverty stricken Palestinians had ended up in the hands of Arafat's private portfolio. The claims were the work of a dozen psychologists in the LAP, Mossad's Department of Psychological Warfare. It had a long history of creating discord among Israel's enemies. Creating discord among Israel's enemies. Creating discord among Israel's enemies. Um, AKA alt right, uh, kill the darkies, let's attack the branches of the problem instead of the root. Let's create race hate and uh, nonsense and hate for the poor and hate for um, uh, positive forms of socialism. Let's focus on that instead of the people who's uh, robbing and uh, robbing everyone and, and murdering some people around the world. Let's ignore that and, and talk about uh, killing people with no money and power or um, undermining people that already have no money or power. Let's, that, that seems uh, like a better strategy. Okay, the claims were the work of a dozen psychologists. Uh, okay, I read that part. Um, Arafat's death had offered a further opportunity for the LAP to show its skills. Working with information from Mossad's 24 stations around the world, psychologists had proved that Arafat's controlled a financial portfolio estimated to be in the region of $6.5 billion. Yet the Palestinian Authority, which administered the PLO's territories in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, was close to bankruptcy. The LAP had planted a story in the Cairo-based newspaper Al-Ahran Weekly, the Abdul Jawad Saleh, a leading member of the authority, wanted Arafat's financial advisor, Mohammed Rashid, who controlled the PLO's portfolio to be questioned. Soon, newspapers and TV stations in the Gulf, uh, in the Gulf states, it says Gulf Straits, uh, but Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon found themselves in, um, I guess it could be Gulf Straits, never heard that term in possession of cof copies of highly secret PLO report that showed that for years the PLO had a deficit of over 95 million a month. The story became more explosive when the IMF, International Monetary Fund, revealed Arafat had diverted 1 billion US dollars uh, or more of the PLO's funds from 1995 to 2000. I'm gonna stop here and pick up in a uh, an another video, but before I do that, that shouldn't surprise anyone because everyone knows who's familiar with my channel now. I'm a big critic of, um, in addition to uh, Judaism, I'm also a critic of the majority sect of Islam. The uh, majority sect of, of Muslims consists of four legal schools, Hanafi, Hanbali, Shafi, and Maliki. People who uh, adhere to any of these uh, schools of thought or um, descended from those individuals or are the majority in a given country tend to support corrupt, kleptocratic, despotic, and uh, racist leaders. I mean, they have a long history of doing this. They'll support, a good, good case in point of this is they'll support the likes of the Al Saud crime family, but um, they'll go as hard as they possibly can against... Uh, uh, secular leaders who want the best for the people and who share the wealth like Gaddafi. They'll do a jihad on him, but they won't do anything to the Al Saud crime family. All right, I'm going to stop here, pick it up in another video. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you in a future video, God willing.